The real value of culture becomes evident in the face of crisis. Culture in the time of Corona. Virtual European Capital of Culture Forum on May 20 to 22. The real value of culture becomes evident in the face of crisis. Hello everyone who joined us today at Virtual European Capital of Culture Forum, Culture in the Time of Corona. In this morning session, we are going to ask, is COVID-19 challenging the idea of global culture? But first of all, a very quick note in Lithuanian. <clears throat> Labas rytas atgal visiems prisijungusiems prie virtualaus Europos kultūros sostinės formų kultūra koronos metu. Jau visai netrukus prasidės diskusija, ar COVID-19 metą iššūkį globalios kultūros idėjai. Šis pokalbis vyks anglų kalba, tačiau jai norėtumėte klausyti su sinchroninio vertimo, instrukcijas, kaip tai padaryti, rasite komentarų skiltyje po šią transliaciją. And now back to English. So when the borders are closed, uh, when countries don't always find an agreement in the time of pandemic, it is only natural to ask ourselves what is going to happen to the idea of global world and global culture as well. For many years, international has been the keyword for a lot of cultural, cultural institutions. And for many years, we've been talking about staying local while also being global. So what happens next? And can we still talk about culture without borders during the pandemic? These are the questions that we are going to raise today. My name is Monica Gimbutaita. I am the culture editor at 15min.lt. And now I am more than excited to say hello to our participants today. So today with us, we have Oshirina oh, Zelenskina, who is the director of the Lithuanian Culture Institute, uh, an institution that promotes Lithuanian culture abroad. Good morning. Uh, Anna Chizhauskina, who is the head of KONAS 2022 program, the organization responsible for KONAS European Capital of Culture project. Hello, Anna. Hello. Um, I'd like to say hello to Mikte Rihorst, who is the director and founder of RV Europe, a non-profit media collective that publishes a print magazine, multimedia stories and podcasts. Good morning, also, everybody. Also, Paulina Malloy, who is the international relations manager at Culture Zone Wroclaw, the legacy institution of Wroclaw 2016. Hello. And finally, I say hello to Giuseppe Porcaro, who is the head of outreach and governance at Bruegel, the Brussels-based economic think tank. Giuseppe Porcaro is also a political geographer and science fiction writer. Thank you, hi. So welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining us. And uh, before we begin our discussion, I have a message to our viewers. Uh, you are welcome to ask questions in the comments section and uh, we will try to answer them at the end of our discussion. So, in order to predict what is the future of global culture, I believe that uh, first of all we have to try to understand what is going on in general. So, um, Mick, a few years ago you had a TED talk called Collective Storytelling, a new narrative for Europe. Um, and I'd like to ask you, uh, what is the narrative of Europe right now during the pandemic? Is it changing and like, should we be alarmed by these changes? Yeah, thank you very much for, for having me this morning. Uh, hello, everybody. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, that was a couple of years ago exactly that I, that I talked about that. And I think if we've seen one thing um, that is, the, that is uh, a Europe that has been very absent from, from this whole pandemic, a Europe as a political political but not as a, as a cultural concept because obviously we are um, even with closed borders we are very connected as, as Europeans our countries are still very much uh, uh, working with each other I'm currently living in Belgium but I had to go back to the Netherlands for family matters it was very weird to be at a closed border to be almost pulled back uh, and said you cannot go back to your own country um, but um, it was it was definitely still very connected like we're we're in a global culture but European culture uh, and, and Europe, uh, Europe's connectedness has, has definitely been 
been taking place, of course, during the pandemic. The only thing is definitely that that the narrative for Europe as such, uh, for a political concept, is is very has been very weak. And that is because the first reaction that all these member states has was was to draw back literally into their borders. And if we know one thing, it's that a, a virus knows no borders but also that it's very difficult to go back from a borderless Europe and a global uh, world to national borders again. So it's, it's sad to see actually that this, this initial reaction to first draw back like turtles almost into our own countries. So Europe has, uh, has, has a big hole to fill, but it's difficult to do that while when the member states are uh, saying, well, we take it from here, Europe, thank you very much. So that's difficult. Yeah. And there's been a lot of talk, especially at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, as, as Mick mentioned, about how coronavirus might be a threat to European Union and European unity. Uh, Giuseppe, do you think that these claims are justified? What is your opinion? Well, um, I think that Mick put it quite, uh, quite correctly. At the beginning of the pandemic, there has been this uh, movement uh, of uh, retracting ourselves into our own uh, uh, shells, uh, shells, uh, being those shells, uh, national borders, but also being those shells, our own homes, because we've been uh, kind of forced to be in our own apartments and uh, and homes, which uh, which were our own shells uh, on it, on its own. But also, as the crisis has been unfolding, uh, different narratives have been emerging, and I think that there has been a, an evolution you know, from this first retraction to the current state of, of the situation, where actually there have been movements up and down. I mean, where uh, basically we've been seeing, especially the evolution until last week when uh, Macron and Merkel made the statement of, uh, of uh, a potential agreement for a 500 billion um, uh, recovery fund, uh, which would be based on grants and not loans. So for the first time, a mutualization of the debt at the European level, this also showed the other side of the story, which is basically the fact that through such a shock, the European Union itself, I mean, in terms of political project, is actually in a watershed moment. It can go really wrong, but also it can be through this kind of crisis that we can make some of the steps that might be historical. So I think that we are really on, on this kind of situation that is very dual and uh, as Mick said yes the culture is still like very much connected to a certain extent because we are here for example this morning we are all connected from different places we are in our own homes in our own shells but we are connected with, with, with the rest of, uh, of you I mean and the rest of our audience that is listening to us and I think this has been a little bit my experience since the beginning you know like I've been more local I've been trying to, uh, I mean, I rediscovered my, my block, basically, because I couldn't even discover my city. I had to be inside my block and, and basically speak with my neighbor who is in front of me because we just have a window with each other. At some point, you want to speak with human beings in a physical format. So there's been a new analog moment that we have at the moment, but also this kind of uh, very hyper-connected, hyper-digital um, uh, connectivity that that uh, keeps us, uh, you know, on a on a more global slash European uh, remote distance kind of thing. So I, I think it's a very very weird moment. It's very hard now to say which direction we are going to, but there are a lot of forces at play at the moment. Well, if we talk about global and, and international culture, um, it is necessary to understand why being international is so important for the sector. Anna, maybe you can answer this question, why being international is so important for cultural organizations? Thank you, Monica. Uh, indeed, European Capital of Culture uh, project that we are implementing as an example of an international project is uh, a kind of program and probably the main cultural uh, program of the European Union that helps us um, stay connected and uh, you know um, encourage empathy towards others towards other cultures it fosters our sensitivity uh, uh, you know uh, knowledge about the diverse cultures in Europe and getting to know each other. So I think I would wish to say that, uh, you know, this situation doesn't pose a risk for such programs or our connectivity, but 
uh, you know, seeing it from a very practical perspective from within our program, I do uh, see some risks, uh, you know, uh, uh, knowing that there are uh, certain, um, uh, you know, restrictions on mobility, restrictions uh, that uh, we don't know how long it might last. Uh, we would definitely um, be, you know, more careful in planning uh, international projects or projects that are essentially based on international connectivity. So, uh, on, so on one hand, I see a risk of, uh, as Mick put it, uh, staying in a shell. Uh, either it, it would be a national shell or a very regional shell. And I think it's very important. And the uh, ECOC program is based on the idea of connecting to many different uh, regions in Europe. And we are trying to connect to, uh, you know, the different countries that uh, our cultural sector usually cooperates with, you know, because there is a tendency uh, usually in the culture sector to stay connected with, the, you know, with your neighbor countries that you find the dialogue or understanding quite easily. And much uh, um, less often, uh, uh, you know, culture sector connects with, uh, you know, uh, uh, countries in the opposite side of the union, for example. Uh, this is kind of a, a, a tendency uh, that we see in uh, international cooperation, cooperation projects like Creative Europe. Um, on the other hand, um, you know, our program, in our case, um, it's, very, it's based, you know, this international cooperation with artists is based on a, a deep um, understanding of local culture. So, for example, we organize artist exchanges. We welcome, for example, an artist from Belgium or France who stays for some time uh, in Kaunas. Uh, he gets to know the local as cultural aspects. He gets to know uh, the local community's expectations or challenges. And uh, he can, uh, you know, this uh, outsider's perspective is very much uh, needed in order to get to know yourself better, but also to connect with other cultures. So I think this deep, um, deep connection, deep dialogue is uh, at risk. Um, on the other hand, the digital uh, means, uh, they allow a broader connectivity, in fact. And uh, today's forum is uh, an example of that. We uh, usually hold this event in a physical space, and this allows only a limited participation of people. Also, a limited, you know, it limits your uh, opportunities to participate in CONAS forum because of the traveling. And uh, in this case, in the in the case of the virtual forum, uh, you know we've had uh, visitors and listeners from uh, you know as far as China, also different European uh, countries. So, and I think that cultural sector has to uh, be aware of that. Not only possibility, but also you know kind of I think that the the narratives or the topics of our um, uh, of our international projects. Uh, get uh, more should get more uh, sensitive for global issues global topics and address more global uh, you know uh, interest areas uh, Paulina do you already see signs that uh, coronavirus might have long-term consequences to international projects organized by culture zone Wroclaw uh, good morning. Thanks for the question. Yeah, I, I wish I could say no. <laughs> I wish to be positive. Um, but of course, for us, for international programs, like Anna said, this uh, coronavirus and as a um, and closing of the borders had an immense effect, like physically, shockingly, <laughs> very quickly. Part of our activities, artists in residence program, that was just like you no know, let's let's put it bluntly was blocked <laughs> in this moment so to to come back to the um, norm we had before we first of all need the borders to be opened back but also uh, to um, to have the possibility to travel um, and also the will to travel and here as for this um, eagerness for mobility here is where i see the risk because uh, like with many debates of this type, now the, the, the question is posed how the world will look like and how would f people feel about it. And, and I think it's too early to judge, but there may be some kind of mistrust. 
uh, and uh, and both on the side because you know it's been like stopped for a moment but also because of this virus that we didn't conquer yet so we're not talking about the future after yet we're not we're not there yet and how um how careful people will be and this is what i see as a risk that the that the that the interest may be different and also unfortunately that economically and politically there may be this inward uh, looking change into you know we need to support like our projects and our local things and uh, this is natural and of course we also need a lot of um, this kind of activities i'm not trying to say it but that very quickly you know after so many years or of sharing and unification of europe from day to day borders have got closed you know politicians speak openly about like you know turning into ourness and this just is is not even questioned so depending how long the situation lasts and what becomes into the narrative of speaking of you know national versus international then here i see the risk uh, bigger or smaller so i hope not and we really we worked many years i guess all of us speaking here for for this not to be the case and not having to justify why we inviting the so-called foreign artists instead of our um, uh, but no i think it's a good balance it's even more important than before to stress it that culture has no borders ideas exchange don't have borders and the more we exchange the more we all gain so it's just losing opportunities, like Anna said, if we don't go global, yeah? And with the technology, of course, we can strengthen it, but I'm still for a lot of real experience. So I hope the mobility opportunities will come back. So Shirina, the function of the Lithuanian Culture Institute is to promote Lithuanian culture abroad. Uh, however, this year, many festivals and many events have been cancelled. So does it mean that the Institute will have to search for some new measures and some new forms of representation? Yes, yeah, so thank you. Uh, thank you, of course, for inviting me for, for the possibility to talk to, uh, today. Yes, uh, um, well, our work um, was uh, the, the, in, the, in the face of, of a crisis, of pandemic, um, it was a crash, crashing effect of our, for our daily work. Uh, you know, the international culture, international culture, uh, culture relations relies so, so heavily, so much on uh, artist mobility. And, uh, you know, uh, starting from March, uh, um, all our running activities, collaborations were cancelled, stopped, postponed, and, and so on. Um, so except uh, communication and except um, um, some, some other projects so we can uh, for plannings and, and other, we have stopped our, our activities. And they have to say it, it was like a, some kind of a disappointing moment uh, for many um, my colleagues, as well as cultural attaches working uh, in the field. Um, as we and the institute, we coordinate uh, activities of our sending cultural attaches, and we also administrate the budget uh, for the activities. So it was like you know um, disappointing moment because uh, um, so many efforts you put into preparing all these programs in getting uh, partners, local and and foreign, and um, convincing some good uh, good venues to take all the same and culture uh, show, show, uh, shows or, or concerts, it, it had, to, had to be cancelled. And um, this first uh, shock led to, to rethinking of, of the programs and uh, to looking for, for new ways, for something what, what can then we do in that situation. And of course, the cultural uh, people, or uh, cultural communities, uh, it's, it's very active at the moment for inviting uh, people to, to, to share the ideas, uh, how we can, can maintain with this aspect of cultural, uh, international cultural, and um, yeah, we not not every not every format of uh, cultural activity, international cultural activity, can be um, transformed to virtual space. 
um, it's uh, easier to, to go with conferences or some projects like operational projects. Uh, and we have some good examples already on like uh, the conference replacing Chernobyl and the upcoming uh, conference on, on Jewish uh, culture in on Litva culture in Lithuania. But um, of course we have to, 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 to still uh, uh, stay for face-to-face -face collaboration and activity as uh, the mobility is essential for cultural, uh, uh, for international cultural relations. Um, and uh, yeah, we, ha we have this um, uh, growth on, on interest uh, on uh, um, internet uh, platforms and uh, like some, so we also launched some actions like we shared our channels with the Lithuanian artist community uh, they took over uh, the institute's uh, um, social media channels for their uh, uh, showcase of their work, and it was uh, uh, very welcomed uh, by community and got attention on media. And it, it, it we also monitored some growth on um, uh, in audience and uh, even in in hundreds of press percents. Um, but I, I say the mobility is keyword for international culture it's essential and uh, now we have no answer how we can maintain this aspect of mobility um, in the time of closing up and locking down and uh, it all this uh, new ways of um, of, of um, culture on, on internet or on, in, in, on virtual culture uh, I hope it's just a leading up to to a moment when we uh, where when we can come together uh, again and to collaborate again. I, I have to say one thing: it's uh, mobility is not only about traveling. Uh, it's not only about uh, traveling, and even not about uh, performing in foreign countries. It's about exchange. It's about circulation of ideas. It's about inspiration for artists. It's about coming together to, for collaborations. It's about collaborating and co-creating. So the circulation of ideas is very, very, very need, needed for, 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 for cultural sector, especially for artists. Well, it has already been mentioned that the rise of coronavirus has forced cultural institutions to explore digital virtual spaces. Uh, Max, in your opinion, can going online be a solution for cultural sector, a long-term solution, especially when we talk about international culture and international projects? Maybe it's not that simple. Um, I, that, that that is not that simple. I think I think what's, what some other participants have already mentioned that it's very difficult to just translate or convert every every event or every piece of an art exhibition or or even digitization of museums to truly to truly convert everything and every single element of such an experience to the to, to a virtual experience uh, i also don't think it's 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 necessary because um as 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 giuseppe also mentioned like a true part of your identity and also from these cultural institutions is truly also their local their local their locality their localness so for for museums it's also just being able for people to just wander in for a little bit and wander out and I personally also have to admit that even during this this pandemic, I have not digitally wandered through any museums. I've also not uh, visited so many places digit digitally. But but to have the opportunity, I think, is it's really great because it will limit the necessity for people to to travel everywhere. So it has a lot of benefits. I think also um, the pandemic itself shows that that uh, this is an opportunity for a lot of institutions, events. Uh, conferences to rethink the format, rethink what they're doing, and I think we'll only have a have a positive uh, approach. It's also something that, as as a media, we're trying to do. Um, we have a new upcoming project that's called the Silver Lining, uh, and it's going to be our new digital. It's going to be our print magazine and digital projects coming out in early June, and we're really trying to go all around Europe to see the silver lining to this pandemic, to see how artists, how um, football clubs, how for in, uh, or how um, journalists have been covering the pandemic and what is the silver lining and the opportunities that have arisen with this pandemic. And honestly, obviously there's a lot of um, 
difficult elements to this pandemic, including, of course, the, the health crisis and the economic crisis uh, to it. But it's also definitely an opportunity, as I think many people online have written in opinion pieces for organizations, countries, consumers, uh, families, companies to truly rethink uh, what is the basis, what are the, what are the core values of their organization and what parts of that can be put back and maybe reeled in and maybe um, really sort of like converted into a, a blend of local and then virtually, so I would say global virtual uh, elements. And I think it's definitely, people should really see this as an opportunity. I know it's been said many times before and it's also a very strange thing to say, but it's an opportunity for everyone and every organization, especially for organizations and companies to rethink what they want to offer and who they are and go back to their core values and which elements of that can be uh, local, regional, uh, transnational, and and global or European. Even. Yeah. Uh, there's another issue that I'd like to raise. Uh, political scientists say that uh, coronavirus-linked nationalism is on the rise. So can nationalism infect culture? Giuseppe, this one goes to you. Thank you. Uh, nationalism is already has already been a infecting culture for 20 years, I think, since nationalism yeah. actually started as a cultural movement back in the 19th century, when it was uh, linked to a specific strand, which was Romanticism, if we remember very well about uh, the origins of, uh, of nationalism itself. So obviously there is always like a very weird kind of uh, relation between uh, nationalism and, and culture even if uh, culture has also been very much uh, uh, the, the, the bed of uh, the bad side of, of globalism, of uh, uh, culture without borders, I mean, uh, and, and so on. But it has also been uh, a way for reassur reaffirming the national language, the national movements and so on. So I think that uh, we should put all this into a, that kind of wider perspective. It's like, Culture has always been uh, in a, some sort of uh, very uh, strict relationship with actually nationalism because it has, I mean, part of national, nationalism itself is building a common culture. So the question to me is like, uh, uh, does this new wave of, uh, of, uh, of closing the borders or getting back this kind of inwards kind of looking, which we are going to see on many issues from the economics to the politics, uh, is it going to affect the way we are going to approach culture at this moment? You know, like how, how this kind of relationship could affect uh, the leaking of, of, of culture and politics and economics, which is a very, very complex uh, question. So indeed, we've been seeing more and more uh, this ambivalent, uh, as I was saying before, about Europe, this ambivalent movement where we have on one hand, we are closing down or like opening up. I mean, these two tensions that are over there are, are, are basically playing a, a role. And what I think, I mean, it, I think that this is something perhaps to reflect. There are also two ways that seeing the, um, the current pandemic. On one hand, we could see it without this kind of disruption like uh, we have the possibility now of disrupting culture, uh, disrupting the way we've been doing things so far and so on. But on the other hand, we can see it as an acceleration of dynamics and forces which were already before this pandemic was starting. And uh, we can see the fact that uh, this wave of nationalism was already at play just before we were starting. And we've been seeing an acceleration of these kind of things especially in certain countries which were more affected by the crisis. I mean, I'm speaking about Italy because we've been seeing that at political level in Italy, there has been quite strong nationalistic moments uh, already before the pandemic. And I'm very worried that actually the pandemic is going just to accelerate these kind of things. So uh, I think we are really very uh, topical moment of, of the history uh, at the global level, but also at the European level, and each of the actors will, will have to choose, not a side, but will have to choose what they are going to say. Are they going to accelerate things that we are, were over there already before, or are they going to take this opportunity and disrupt and do something totally new? 
Um, Anna, what is your position? Is coronavirus linked nationalism a threat to international culture? And if yes, what can be done to prevent it? Well, Monica, I think uh, that uh, from this perspective, uh, the platforms, the international platforms, um, I mean, in a general sense, uh, have uh, big importance and a role to play here in keeping the, um, you know, the uh, countries and cultures in connection. Um, you know, I'm speaking about uh, international networks, programs such as ECUC, the culture institutes, as well as the programs, the international programs that are uh, uh, funding the culture sector, as well as uh, national culture funds to keep the international connectivity a priority, to keep it on the agenda and, uh, you know, promote some um, uh, international cooperation, be digital or in some shapes or forms. And I think, uh, you know, our case is, um, our program is a, a laboratory also for that. How will this cooperation, how it might look like? Um, Paulina um, Maloy can um, back me up on that. Our organizations, uh, we, uh, in the past few months, we have been in close contact trying to find or maintain the connection between Wroclaw and Konas that are also sister cities, not only uh, both uh, sharing the ECUC uh, label. So, you know, it's, it's uh, funny, it's different, but uh, we've been, uh, you know, cooperating on events such as this. Uh, we have some kind of laboratory for um, artistic um, experiments uh, within the quarantine regime, how we can organize events, small events or events without physical contact. So this resulted in a program of, um, you know, like a mobile stage or culture in the courtyards, events that can be viewed from balconies and windows. And this is all a result of sharing our experiences, uh, sharing, uh, you know, our methods of work uh, during this this pandemic time and I think that uh, the culture sector really has to take up an active role here to maintain these connections and to promote cultural dialogue. Does it mean that uh, because of coronavirus we will pay more attention to local culture? Oshirina, what is your opinion? Uh, well, um... We can, we can talk maybe about some side effects uh, of, of this isolation. Um, from, we, from locking down, we see now that some mental health of, of, of humans, of, of, uh, of people are in risk. It's a side effect of locking down. Uh, and as the same in the cultural activities, in the culture sector. Um, the rising borders, rising barriers for cooperation, it have could, could have some side effects like uh, um, looking uh, inwards or more doing inwards, like uh, cultural isolation or, or less international programs uh, or less funding for international programs. In, I mean by local funders, by national funders. So, um, but uh, um, we, uh, sector, cultural sector, and, uh, and especially in Lithuania, being a small country, we have to keep our eyes open and we have to protect the idea of cultural cooperation very actively. As you know, um, it's um, like, um, um, like, you know, it's a culture cooperation operation or cultural activities. It's about dialogue, about partnership, about uh, more understanding of each other. And uh, uh, today it's, uh, it's very important to, to keep, keep, keep that. Um, we know this sharing platforms already, uh, some uh, uh, institutions, cultural institutions have uh, to share the ideas how to work. How to, uh, I, I referring to my colleagues uh, told already about this to capital, uh, European capitals uh, uh, sharing uh, uh, ideas, the same within the institutes. We have a network, uh, European network for institutes also. Webinars we do um, share how, how we have 
what what are the changes, what are the new ideas. And I have to say that the cultural sector invested a lot in the recent years, especially in the recent uh, years, in the international network structures. And the uh, Lithuanian cultural sector um, uh, did a lot uh, to be a part, became a part of international networks or to, to build a new international networks and structures. And it now it's, um, I don't think that we will give it up. Uh, it's also driven uh, by, by the size of the country, especially uh, by, because the, uh, the audiences and, uh, um, is, and also economical um, reason, um, it's uh, driven, the artists are driven to, to look for bigger market, for more possibilities uh, um, um, beyond uh, Lithuania. Um, and yeah, I, I ha we have to protect the idea of, of uh, international cooperation. Uh, we have to be proactive. Uh, we have to look uh, or to, um, to make uh, uh, our fun funding institutions to keep the balance for, for funding national and international uh, cultural activities. And uh, yeah, um, we have a positive uh, a reason to be a positive because you know it's not a first, maybe not a first uh, pandemic uh, and crisis uh, in in the human uh, in the world uh, of humans. So if we will overcome that. I, I hope so. But uh, yeah, I agree that uh, this uh, borders when we raised it now, it can it can be uh, it can it can be dangerous. But we have to look that it it will not become a norm that it's not to last for long. <laughs> so even if for good reasons, even if even if they are, were raised for a good reason now. Well, and you mentioned before that there is actually a possibility that because of coronavirus, people will pay more attention to local culture. Uh, how this new tendency might affect the sector and what might be long term consequences if, if that happens? Um, I definitely think at least in the sector, that there is more attention to the local activities. Also because very strongly connected to economics, because of course, artists, many and freelancers and many cultural professionals are now uh, very much um, impacted by this, what happened. So of course they coming to the discussion like, like many other professional groups. Uh, and the governments or local governments are looking also for solutions for them to kind of uh, help um, them or us in this case, I should say, the cultural workers to um, to survive. Uh, so uh, so it gives some opportunity locally. As for the long term things and impact for international, I really think it's too too early to say. I am a bit afraid, as I mentioned before, of the mistrust. That there will be this, that this, that we are a bit, let me say, it's something controversial, a bit spoiled with a thing of like, you know, open borders, easy traveling, and you know, like summer in Spain and winter in Italy, and this is like a, became a norm. And now, when it's um, when the borders are closed, planes are not flying, uh, we think, oh yeah, can we do something? Nothing, in fact. Like my first reaction was also like, you know, the, the borders are closed, we just sit. I really don't know. Uh, how to work internationally but this is a challenge and i think it's a good moment to again rethink what's the core what's the aim of our activities and how can we um how can we carry on keeping the core so to so what why are we doing it for but doing it more with like a respect to um to the conditions and to the local, that, that it doesn't have to be local against international, you know, it, it, it should be like the both, uh, many, many stakeholders must be now considered, not forgetting the economy, which I believe will have an immense impact on everything that's happening now in culture and, and politics, and that those all three factors are so interrelated uh, that we have to find out the new, uh, new solutions or renewed solutions that really uh, fulfill the, the aims that we have 
help each other, but at the same time are not in um, not conflicting each other. Because as Giuseppe said before, the um, already before coronavirus crisis, many European countries were in other kind of crises. They were pain, difficult tendencies, and now it can accelerate it. And I think to to somehow deal with these tendencies, we need to very respectfully and carefully, you know, consider everything and take the most important things, not to play them against each other. I'm not sure if I'm clear now, but like, uh, mm, it's difficult to say about uh, about the tendency, but we should really uh, insist on still local culture and international culture and not to present them against each other. Is it possible that global culture will become a privilege of the big, powerful, rich players, for example, Netflix, while others will have to somehow lower their ambitions and stay local more and more often? Uh, Mick, what is your opinion? Well, if, if that is possible, if it becomes a privilege for the, like, yeah, that, that was already, I think, a problem, um, that it's very difficult for a small, local, uh, budget-strapped organization or company, or or especially for nonprofit media or nonprofit museums, to to make a fist or to or to, to really uh, go against the immense powers that multinational corporations have, and I'm definitely on a culture level, a cultural level, I'm including all, a lot of these American uh, corporations, but also of course they're European, European or 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 global uh, or uh, other continental counterparts. Um, I don't think that it has to be truly a fight of sort of David versus Goliath uh, to to get to get this attention of viewership because there are many tools and we've seen uh, many very creative tools springing up, especially also during the pandemic, but also before, where creators on YouTube on uh, other websites can have very direct relationships uh, with their with their fans. Uh, you have tools like Patreon uh, in in the states and and, and Steady in uh, for, for for media creators in in Europe, which can give a, a single creator or an organization a very direct relationship with their fans. And you don't have to go through the big platforms. You can bypass even like Facebook and Twitter, even though that's 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 difficult to to also get the word out there. But there 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 are a lot of tools out there for an individual creator or small groups to get a very direct relationship with their fans. And I think that is the most important part. You have to truly have an engaged and captivated audience, whether you are just a, 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 an illustrator or a podcast maker or a, a bigger um, but still small organization. Uh, it's really all about direct relationship you have with your fans and truly listening to what they want. And if you can, if you can convert that into a, a business model, where whether it's just donations or whether it's tickets or whether it's charging for for your actions, I think that's the most important sort of change that people have to make. So I also saw this campaign in the, in the Netherlands that said, "Stop doing free concerts if you're you know at home in your living room. Stop." Uh, stop just broadcasting for free. It's you're you're charging your time. You're still putting your creative stuff out there. Obviously, you have to do a a good mix between showcasing yourself, but you sh you should, as a cultural institution or as an individual creator, stop doing everything for free. You know, like uh, you're 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 worth something. It's a difficult step for people to make, but um, I guess there's many tools available and. People should really look around, especially individual creators, to see what's out there to get this direct relationship with their, with their fans. So it is possible. Uh, you just have to truly uh, yeah, make this engaged audience work, I think. And I've seen many initiatives pop up, and it's, it's also beautiful to see the creativity uh, from many people all around. Well, Europe is, of course, our working field, but all around the world. So I am very hopeful in that, in that respect. It's not all about fighting the big corporations. They, they, don't, they don't hold all the cards. So during our discussion, we've mentioned several threats to global culture and several problems. And um, now I'd like to address you all the same question. How can we maintain the concept of culture without borders during and after COVID-19? Anna, maybe we can start with you. Oh, I guess I would be rephrasing some of the points we've been going through in this discussion, but I think that there's a huge importance now, um, you know, the growing importance of the existing networks and international platforms, programs that are continuing, such as the European Capital of Culture, 
uh, you know, uh, programs, funding programs such as, uh, you know, Culture of Solidarity by the European Cultural Foundation that have um, a very strong impact now on how our international cooperation will uh, develop or be maintained. Of course, the digitization that has been uh, just discussed, and I am very much with Nick here, that, uh, you know, this, we should uh, look for opportunities here and this topic has been raised also in the previous discussions of the forum, the importance of new public platforms um, for cultural organizers, for culture operators, for artists that should not be only uh, national culture platforms, but possibly also uh, the European, uh, European or international culture platforms. So I suppose this, uh, you know, the current conditions are accelerating uh, these priorities that are, uh, were already being developed in the, you know, uh, years before the pandemia. Um, yeah. Yes, Paulina. Mm. Yeah, I was I was thinking about this answer, and I'll tell you <laughs> what the, what the, I. We came here in the culture zone Wrocław uh, after this first uh, initial shock of oh my god we can't do anything now. Is of course the idea that uh, the cultural exchange was also happening before in the times when we had borders here coming from the more eastern part of Europe. It's not so long ago, you know. So uh, and and still was very influential, of course, the exchange of of, uh, of ideas and cultural thoughts. What what happened a lot with uh, writings and magazines and uh, and letters, <laughs> and this is a bit like what we uh, what I believe we can do with online, like Anna said uh, right now, that we can, uh, of course, we should stay in touch with like all the networks with everyone, and like collect. What, what's happening now, collect the, the news, the information, the ideas, the creative, you know, popping up ideas and share them here. Not to forget, you know, that there is a world out there because this is the feeling I, I, I'm a bit now having for, or I had it for a few weeks that we now locally in our shields and we're looking around in our cities, maybe in our countries, but this like um, abroad seems very, very far away and difficult to follow. Uh, and media unfortunately strengthen this picture. So I think our role could be now to to be like a kind of messenger that you know there is a world out there. They also having troubles. They also having solutions. It's a lot of interesting things. Let's share it. Let's observe it. Let's transmit it. Let's translate it. Um, and uh, and this are this is also a base of a few ideas. Now we have for a project that are not possible in their real or like you know offline form yet. But I still think we can start with exchange of ideas on the digital way or co-creation in a digital way that, as was said before, will later lead to the, let's hope, uh, real encounter. Because I really do believe in real encounters and I hope next year in Kaunas we'll see each other face to face. <laughs> Let's hope that. Uh, Josefa, what is your opinion? What can be done to maintain the concept of culture without borders? Well, um, I wanted to bring another dimension to it because we all spoke about the um, digital side because that's the easy and uh, let's say the most immediate way of keeping those uh, channels open. But uh, uh, it will be interesting to reflect how we can use uh, analog channels as well. And um, I mean, uh, it was just reminded that uh, uh, not so long time ago, I mean, like 25, 30 years ago, I mean, 30 years ago or so, not 25, uh, we still had borders, but we still had international corporations. But 30 years ago, we also didn't really have the internet the way we have the internet right now. And we still had some sort of corporations. And even if we, we go not so long back in time, I mean, already in the early, still in the early 2000s, for example, uh, I remember that there was um, there was a band that uh, that was uh, called the Postal Service in uh, in the U.S. The Postal Service was uh, was a band that was kind of revolutionary for the time because they were uh, not a band that was physically uh, meeting and rehearsing together, but they were sharing uh, the tapes and they were uh, sending each other the different uh, um, you know uh, tracks by by post. 
and then they were publishing things together. So I wonder if, uh, if indeed other kind of means, analog means, such as post, because post is still working, you know, the physicality of, uh, of uh, cultural creation could still kind of create it uh, uh, and, and kept and, and, you know, like we can still be creative and, uh, and use physical means, maybe this time coupled with the digital ones, but like, uh, let's not forget the, the, the analog uh, uh, side of the story. Let's try to really uh, mix the, the, the fact that we are in our home and we can do things, you know, like, like uh, practically, you know, uh, with the fact that we can have the chance to share it with, uh, with, uh, with a different audience, which is an, an occasion that we, we didn't have like 30 years ago. So I think that if we can combine these two things, we could start to have really new stuff and, and really rethink a little bit the, the, the stuff that we were doing so far, you know, and not just doing, not just thinking about Netflix again, because they are, they, we can't compete in that league. And uh, maybe that's, uh, that's not the role of the cultural sector either. Oshina, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I will share. Um share my ideas because, you know, I was thinking about that. I'm thinking so already some, since March, <laughs> uh, what we can do in, in this direction and um, all our staff and colleagues, we are doing the same, we are sharing the ideas. And for the moment, I have to see, um, it's very important to keep connected, to, to keep uh, connected um, uh, in different ways. Like, let's say, um, to, to, don't stop to communicate with your colleagues abroad, even if uh, if you cannot um, go um, to see fly to the meeting, but you can join the meeting online. It's very important. Sometimes it's not so easy today because you are, you know, we are already a little bit tired of, um, from all the zoom zoomings and and everything and all these uh, video conferences. But uh, just to, 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 to join, um, uh, to, to exchange, to ideas, because it's a globe, we, we have to have in mind it's a global crisis. And it makes it easier because it means that not only your organization, not only your country is affected uh, by the coronavirus. So you have uh, colleagues abroad, they're also affected. Everything is on the same boat. Everyone is on the same boat, so we can share uh, the ideas. At the same for uh, I would uh, say this, it's very important for our artists, our, our organ cultural organizations, to keep this um, uh, networking, uh, in, in, even if it's only on uh, um, digital way at the moment. But uh, you know, there are many good ideas, nice ideas. I also noticed that. Uh, at, it's at, on, on uh, facing uh, the crisis, um, many organizations uh, started to be uh, to to open, uh, be more open to each other. Like uh, some uh, publishers, they, they they have now a, a channel which is kind uh, called like uh, what is named uh, uh, Publishers Without Borders, and they do um, share the business models how they uh, how they managed to to um, to respond to the crisis how what 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 is working what not so very openly so it's a way uh, to, to 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 share the ideas and of course we need to keep the balance uh, by programming and by uh, funding the uh, cultural uh, initiatives, balance of national, but it's also important, important, very important for our audiences, for economics, for everything, but and international activities. Uh, don't forget the balance. I, I think it's very important to keep uh, keep in mind that um, the the artists are very, are very creative, and uh, everyone in working in the field are very creative, and there will be new forms and new ideas how to collaborate. Uh, even if it's not possible physically to meet for the moment. And some of very creative ideas and nice ideas, we will keep it. 
we will uh, have it in, in, in we will take it into in our new new future in our new reality with us as enlarging audience some some very interesting ideas like um yeah we, we will we will continue with that it's a it's a time of uh, yeah it's a time of uh, of 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 challenge and every challenge uh, is uh, some 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 good thing in that because you have to be uh, more creative and more active. So, yeah. Mike, and finally, what is your position? My position on this? Um, well, I must say that that it's uh, that I agree with, of course, all the points that have been made. Like, I, I think it's I think it's very it's very it's it's just cult, the cultural institutions and the cultural sector has always been a sector that's that is very influenced by the political and the economic dynamics that are in that are influencing global culture i honestly very much agree also with uh giuseppe's point that there that there you know there are other channels we've done this before we've gone through also through these crises it's just very different now that it truly affects every sector and everyone instead of the financial crisis of 2008 which was of course dripping down uh, like a the financial crisis like slowly infected the other sectors i think again i'm going to reiterate my point is that it, that it's mostly an opportunity we have to rethink our our own values rethink as an organization rethink as a sector but i'm very i'm very positive in the sense that um obviously it's going to affect on an economic level and on a health uh, uh level m many people too many people um but as a as a as a sector it's, we've always like artists have always been very resilient, and they, they they had to because it's one of the sectors that is the most easily cut from every budget, every government's budget. It's always going to be like ah, just a little bit less to to cultural sectors this year if they had to reform or if they had to cut costs. So, I think our artists have been very used to this. Uh, organization that I know in my home country from the Netherlands they've always been like yeah but I mean you can never count on on having a budget next year so you always have to have this this buffer being resilient um it's 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 not just this crisis it's been it's been a downward trend um in in or in at least in the government's uh, uh support and then uh, so so I think I think as I said before Individual creators have to find a new way to have a relationship with their audience, with organizations as well, because it's it's been it's been ongoing, and I I truly believe in the resilience of of artists and of organizations, and I'm uh, I'm hopeful for the future because I think what I've also seen is that many people have seen oh whoa yeah it is very hard for a, for for a, an individual creator or an artist now to to live, especially right now if you can't do shows anymore. So I think people are willing to help people are willing to donate you just have to find them and uh and and captivate that audience yeah and finally we have a question from our viewer uh aurelia asks and this question is addressed to mick about uh, the project you mentioned to silver linings um does this do the stories vary a lot uh, depending on uh, the country or is there still a common ground in all of them that's that's a good question yeah we've obviously tried to find a red thread or a silver thread through all of the, through all of these stories and that is of solutions so it's a solutions oriented journalism so we obviously address the problem we acknowledge the problem we look at the at the, at the response to it but it's all about the response to the response to this problem and that people are offering so we have one about fake news in lithuania actually the baltic elves which is which is one of the stories that we've, that we've been uh, publishing we have reports from all over Europe, so balcony from balcony orchestras to to factories that have totally shifted to producing uh, face 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 masks. It's about football without without fans and how hooligan uh, culture is is being affected by that. So, it's all about the solutions and the responses to the crisis all over Europe. We've truly tried to go to every corner. Um, and it's like the print magazine, obviously, we're going to send it to print. It's going to be a done project, but the online dossier is going to be a living one. So we truly invite people once we have once we go live on like the first week of June to keep contributing uh, because we've got so many amazing stories and we've really had to make hard decisions what to put in the print magazine, but online we can go much further. So there's going to be podcasts and videos and uh, great stories from Lithuania as well. There is a story about Kaunas 2022 20, actually in there. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thank you. So 
Thank you all very much for joining us today. It's been great talking to all of you. Um, thank and say also thank you to our viewers. And I would like to remind them that uh, today there's going to be another session of the forum called Culture in the Post-Pandemic Future Retooling. And I encourage you to join it. So thank you once again and goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. The real value of culture becomes evident in the face of crisis. Culture in the time of Corona. Virtual European Capital of Culture Forum on May 20 to 22.